Good morning, everyone. My name is Francia. In today's class, we're going to be practicing some yin postures, some restorative postures, and um, some breathing practices and some meditation. So let's come to a comfortable seated position. We're going to start with a little bit of meditation. And I'm feeling a little bit chilly this morning just because I haven't, um, I just finished my, my Ashtanga practice. And um, once you slow down, you start getting cold. So I'm going to put on a little sweater and feel free to you know, put on anything that feels right for you. Make sure that your hips are elevated. And like we always talk about crossing your feet um, at the ankles here in front of each other, not one underneath each other, because this is going to put tension in your ankles. And then one leg is going to be really high. The other one's going to be low. And it's going to call imbalance in your hips. So you want to kind of open your feet, let your knees open out, and then let your heels line up with the seam of your pants. And this way, um, you can find a little bit more of a steady feet. The other option is to tuck that front foot kind of in the calf, between the calf and the thigh. You can do that as well if that's comfortable for you. So make sure that there's no pain in your knees. Make sure there's no pain in your hips. Allow yourself to find a comfortable seat, right? That's what we want to find, a comfortable seat, whatever that means for you. So as we soften the shoulders, Allow the breath to move in through the nose, out through the nose. Nice, easy inhale. Slow and gentle exhale. One more, just like that. Deep breath in. And slow breath out. So we're going to start with the concentration meditation. You can keep your hands where they are. You can hold them on one on top of the other. Physically finding yourself in this natural seat is really the epitome of having a steady practice, a strong practice. Because once your body is positioned in a way where it's comfortable and feels supported and steady, then you won't feel the urge to adjust and change and modify your seat at all. You can just be here. And you can start to concentrate your mind. You can start to focus, pinpoint your attention. So with the next breath in, let's go ahead and just follow that full inhale from the edge of the nostrils, through the back of the throat, down into the lungs, down into the rib cage, inflating the belly, and then following that, that breath out of the body now. Once it's gone through, following it out, all the way out to the edges of the nostrils once more. And then let's just practice that a few times. That conscious awareness of following the breath in, observing as it passes through the body, and then following the breath out observing as it is released out of the body. If you like, you can assign a color to your breath, maybe one particular color for the inhale, and changing that shade of color for the exhale. Noticing as the breath transmutes, changes, morphs, from oxygen filling the body, giving you life force, carbon dioxide, feeding the trees and giving them life force, the perfect cycle. And just give you a few more moments here to continue this pattern. Deep breathing.
the bar. And bringing our awareness and our attention now to our body, and kind of letting the breath become more natural and rhythmic. We're going to focus from the breath to the sensations of the body. And as we sit in stillness, it's not uncommon to start feel start to feel a little bit of tightness, soreness, or numbness in the body. So if you do feel that, it's all right part of the experience. Don't shy away from it and don't try to fight it or get rid of it. Sometimes just a little bit of gentle and um, designated, let's say, discomfort is just what we need to raise our awareness. So allow yourself to be here for a moment, scanning through the body, from the top of the head to the tips of your toes and fingers, finding along the way any places of tightness or tension or not. Maybe your body feels nice and open and supported. from the top of the head, the tips of the toes, the fingers, and back up. Finding what you find, observing, noting, without judgment, without the need to change or modify. If you have the ability, you can make a conscious effort to soften the jaw, the shoulders. Keep allowing the belly to expand and sink with each movement of breath. Notice the front body, your chest, your rib cage and belly, tops of your thighs, your shins, the tops of your feet. Your chest and clavicle, throat and face. What does that front body feel like right now? Notice the side body, back of the head and back of the neck, back of the shoulders, the entirety of the spine, upper, upper middle, and lower back your glutes, back of your thighs, the soles of your hands and feet, palms and soles of your feet. What is your back body feeling like right now? And lastly, we'll observe the side body, the ears, the sides of the head, the sides of the neck, the arms, to the elbows, the armpits, sides of your rib cage kind of comes around, hugging your torso, hips, back of the knees, pinky edge and big toe edge, sides of your feet. Spaces between the fingers. A few moments to observe the side body. The next exhale, 
We'll gently blink the eyes open. Take a moment to let the light come back into your eyes. Maybe take a look around your room, see what sparks a little bit of attention. See what light comes in, what colors come into your eyes. Maybe there's a certain smell in the room you're seated in that can bring some memory to you or a thought. What sounds do you hear around you? Maybe there's trees or a dog sighing or somebody walking outside. Take a couple more breaths to just take it all in. Be here completely present in this moment. And with the next exhale, we're going to release our hands. We're going to release our feet so we can take our feet out of our, our cross-legged position and extend them forward for a moment. I'm going to turn my body sideways here. Extending the legs forward, just take a moment to sit upright. If you have a hard time keeping your back nice and straight, or you can place your hands kind of fingertips behind you and kind of just lean a little bit back so that you can push your chest and rib cage forward. With my sweater, I don't need it anymore. And then from here, so when the hands down on the floor, nice long spine, flex the feet. You can kind of move a little bit here. Lift the rib cage, hollow out the belly, make the chin come towards the chest, let the neck relax so there's no tension in the neck. You can move into circles or half circles. Any direction your head wants to go, you can drop your head back, open your throat, or just keep the chin parallel. And then we're going to take Paschimottanasana. So bring the hands over towards the thighs, hollow out the belly, and let your body fold forward. If you want to place a cushion or um, a blanket on top of your thighs so that you have a place to rest there, that's fine. But we're not going to be here very long. See if you can grab your toes or your ankles. Lengthen out to the torso, look forward, shoulders back, like create space in your spine. The forward fold starts from this place of space. So your tailbone moves back and you're folding and you're hinging from your hips, not from your lower back. So you want to open up, hollow out the belly, lift the rib cage, open up that heart space forward and fold from that space. As you come down, let yourself surrender down. And if possible, maybe your head reaches towards your shins. Or not, maybe your head just kind of rests somewhere in the middle. You can hold on to your feet or ankles. You can move the shoulders back. You surrender to what you find. Let there be no tension. You can place a block on top of your shins, below your knees to support your head if you want to. But again, we're not going to be here very long. Just take a couple moments to kind of wiggle yourself into this position with ease, with love, with steadiness. And then inhale, slowly lift the head up. Move the shoulders back, exhale there. And then inhale, slowly come back up to center. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bring the soles of the feet together for the next pose. So with the soles of the feet together, you're making a diamond shape with your legs. We're gonna take our thumbs inside the feet and we're gonna open those feet up to the side. So point the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. And again, maybe a little bit of swaying side to side, lengthening and stretching. And then I want you to open your throat and your heart. So allow the space of your heart to be wide. Even though your hands are in front, you still want to feel expansiveness coming from the chest, the rib cage. Everything kind of opens out in the front body. And then we're going to start to lean forward ever so slightly. If you have a lot of flexibility in your hips, it's possible you might be able to come all the way to the floor. But you know, for most of us, uh, mortal humans, this is pretty tough, so we just go to where our body allows. Still moving the tailbone back, still lengthening the space of the spine, everything kind of moving forward and down. And then you want to make sure that you're not reaching with your throat, but instead you're reaching with your chest. Move those shoulders back, keep steadiness here. Let's stay for a few breaths. Opening the feet, you use your thumbs to open the feet out to the side. Now we're going to start to flap 
a little bit of the legs, kind of give those hips a little bit of movement. You can go slow one at a time. You can go fast, kind of like butterfly wings. Keep moving the shoulders back and down. Keep allowing yourself to come forward. If you don't want to flap, you can keep it nice and still either way. Let's take one more deep breath in. Inhale, create length. And then exhale, kind of fold, opening those feet nice and wide as you reach. And inhale, slowly come up, straighten the arms, take a moment there. Exhale, good. Now we're going to lean back and we're going to separate the feet so that they are as wide as your mat. You can lean back with just your hands on the floor, but I think it's more comfortable to come down onto the elbows. So if you come down to your elbows, your feet are apart, we're just going to sway the legs to one side and then back to the other. So we're just moving the legs from side to side, like a windshield wiper. We're wiping the windshield with our knees and shins. We're just moving side to side. And this is a restorative movement that we can do to help open up the space in the hips, clear out any stagnant energy that may be resting there. I advise to keep the lower belly drawn in so that you can find a nice connection to the pelvic floor. So that means the muscles of the pelvic floor are drawing in, they're engaging, they're not too relaxed. And then what we'll do is we're gonna hold. So with one leg pulled in, the other one out, you can just stay here with this static hold, or you can take that left foot and place it above the right knee and help guide the knee down. Now you're gonna still find a little bit of a twist in the hips, so be mindful to kind of keep your weight evenly on both forearms. And you can just look down towards that left foot. You can tuck the chin towards the chest and kind of lengthen the back of the neck. Or you can drop your head back if that feels good. Or anywhere somewhere in the middle, maybe just looking forward. Find a position for your head that's going to fit your body well. Steady your breath. You shouldn't feel this in your knees. If you do, then remove this left foot off the right leg. You don't want to feel this in your knees at all. And then exhale, let everybody release the foot. Come back to center. Let's windshield wipe maybe two or three more times before we do the other side. So just so you can notice where the tension lives, how it differs from side to side. Good. One more. And then bringing both feet over to the other side. Staying there for a moment. You want to draw that left knee down towards the floor. Keep the shoulders back. And then if you feel good, that right foot gets placed on top of that knee. And you're going to help with the weight of the right leg, that left leg down. Again, you're creating a little bit of a twist. You can decide what you want to do with your head. Sometimes dropping the head back can be too intense. So again, find a mindful place to be here. Or you can tuck the chin to the chest. Or you can just look forward. You can also just move the head in circles. Try not to create tension in the neck. You want to avoid creating tension in other places while you hold. Steady your breath. Good. And maybe that left knee doesn't come all the way down to the floor. It's okay if it doesn't. You're going to start to feel the stretch in the outside of that left hip. And then everybody exhale. Let's release the right foot. Come back to center, and then we're going to take a moment to lay down all the way onto the back. So I'm going to move my weight a little bit more forward so I have space. And then we're going to lay all the way down onto the back, and let's take a nice long stretch. Reach the arms, reach the toes, reach to the fingertips, lengthen, lengthen your torso, long, long body. And exhale, bend the knees, come back to center. All right, so we're going to do one more um, movement here that allows us to create that twist and that opening in the hips. We're going to take that left leg and extend it out. Now, this left leg may bend as we move, but for now, keep pressing the calf down to the floor and find a nice long hip flexor here. Now, we're going to bring that right knee. If it Come directly over you towards your chest. You're going to just open it slightly to the right. So a little bit off to the right, and then in towards the right shoulder. 
or we can hug that knee with both hands and just feel that movement there. So that left leg stays nice and steady and strong and firm. The right arm, arms are pulling the right knee in. Nice deep inhale, slow exhale. You can close your eyes if you wish. Now, also here, even though the arms are working to pull that right knee towards the right shoulder, also use the right leg to do this job as well. So don't let just your arms work, especially because in a moment we're going to be letting the arms go and we want to try to keep the knee in the same place. Hold three more breaths, soften the shoulders. One. Two. And three. Now you're going to try to keep that right knee right where it is. Just release the hand. It may move away a little bit. That's okay. But keep it where it is. Keep kind of reaching those left toes, pressing down to the left leg. Easy and steady. Now we're going to take the left hand to the outside of the right knee. We're going to move that whole leg over to the left. Nice and slow and steady. You can keep your right arm on the floor. Easy and gentle, moving that leg all the way down to the mat. Now, for me, my right shoulder kind of pops up when I do this. So what I want to do here is realign myself. Maybe take that arm up towards the sky, relax the shoulders, and then let the elbow weigh me down towards the mat. That's possible the hand does touch, it's possible it doesn't. Or you might want to just keep it down by the side. I recommend having the right palm facing up towards the ceiling so that you can open to that front side of the shoulder and the front side of the chest. And let's stay here. Just the head is steady. You can close your eyes. You can look up towards the ceiling. Let that whole right side hip, lower side back start to open up. Very gentle. Very restorative, very kind to your body. Try not to overdo. Let's do three more breaths. One. Two. It's okay if the shoulder is away from the floor. Don't sweat it. Let it be. Three, exhale. And then slowly we're going to come back to center. Take a moment. Bring that right knee back towards the right shoulder. Point the right toe. Lengthen the back of the neck. And exhale. Let's lift the leg. Flex both feet. So point the toes towards you so that the legs are nice and engaged. And then slowly lower that right leg to the floor. Very slow with control, using your right side obliques, lowering down a bit at a time until the right foot touches. And then we point the right toe, engage the right leg, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, bringing that left leg in, first kind of in the center, and then slightly to the left so that it's tracking over that left shoulder. And then hug the shin with both or one hand, either way is fine. I like to use both arms because it makes me feel a little bit more stable and balanced. And then you want to keep that right leg nice and engaged. So even if it kind of bends a little bit, the knee, that's fine. Just keep working on pressing it down, working on drawing that left knee towards that left shoulder. And then we stay here. We breathe, we soften into the tension, we let go of the expectation of what we're supposed to or not supposed to do. It really doesn't matter. Treat your body with love, with kindness, with compassion. It's always there for you, always doing for you. Just send back a little bit of gratitude. Thank you, body. Deep breath in, slow breath out. Let's hold three more breaths. Inhale. One breath. And 
out. Last one, breath in. Breath out. And then from here, we're going to try to release the leg without letting it move. Just bring the hands down. You can still try to squeeze that leg into the body. And we're going to take that right hand on the outside of the left knee. And we're going to move the whole leg over to the right. Nice and controlled and slow. You're going to roll kind of over to your right hip. Try to move that leg as far over as you can. It's okay if that left shoulder lifts. Try to bring the left knee to the floor. So you feel supported. Once you're there, maybe that left arm can go up towards the ceiling, or you can try to extend it out, and maybe it touches the floor, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, you can lower it so that the back of the hand touches the floor and the palm is facing up. And then you want to have your gaze straight up to the ceiling. So try not to look to the left, it would, um, unless your shoulder is on the floor, then you can possibly look to the left. But if the shoulder is elevated like mine is, it's not going to be very helpful to look to the left. At this point, you just want to relax your body in the twist. You want to soften and be here without too much drama going on in the body. So as soon as you start to feel drama, back it off a little bit. Get to a place where it's comfortable, where you can breathe in and out without any you know, obstacles holding your breath back or shortening your exhale. You can do a full exhale breath naturally. Full inhale breath easily. We'll stay here for three more breaths. Try to relax. Feel that nice openness in the back of the left hip. And in the glutes, this is great for sciatica pain if you ever feel that. That nerve that runs from kind of the, the upper hip area where the kidneys kind of are, and it runs all the way down to the leg. It's a great stretch for sciatic pain. Stay here, just one more breath. And with the exhale, we're going to slowly make our way back to center. Hug that left knee back in towards the left shoulder. Reset yourself for a moment. And then exhale, release the leg. Flex both feet as the left leg extends. And hopefully you're making at least maybe a 90 degree angle with your legs, maybe a little bit more if you have some flexibility, or maybe a little bit less if there's some tightness in the body. So just be there for a moment. And we're going to lower the left leg down with control. So hollow out the belly, nice strong core, slow and steady. This leg is going to come down towards the floor. Very slow, very steady, very gentle, very easy. Let it hover for a moment and then let it sink all the way down. And then we're going to take a short little shavasana here because we're actually going to move into one more posture before we finish. But I want you to just observe how the body feels. One more breath. Good. Deep, slow exhale. And bend the knees. Plant the feet on the floor. Take a moment to just lift through the pelvis a little bit, realign the sacrum. And we're going to hug both knees in towards the shoulders. So just like we did before, but now both knees in. Cross the feet, so cross the ankles, and then roll ourselves up and back. Just gentle rolls, giving your lower back, middle back, a little massage. Keep the belly drawn in. Try not to go with a flat back, but really round it back. As you go back, you move into this easy movement of the spine. And then coming to seated. And we're going to walk our feet back, take our feet back so that we can come into a tabletop. So this is the last posture we'll do today. Once we find ourselves in a tabletop position, let's start by tucking the toes under, moving the weight back, and stretching through the feet. So we find that the soles of the feet are getting a nice stretch, but mostly the toes are getting a nice stretch. Your knee 
and your feet are about hip width apart. And from here, you can drop your elbows. You can extend your arms forward, palms together, and then let your head or forehead rest between your arms. Or you can extend your arms separated, shoulder width apart, maybe even come to your fingertips. So we're getting a stretch in the toes, the feet, and the spine and the shoulders. There's a contraction happening in the hips. Take one more breath. So it's similar to Balasana, but a little bit more active. Exhale. And then inhale, everybody will come back up to tabletop. Release the feet, kind of tap them out a little bit if they started getting a little cranky. And then now from the tabletop, cat and cow, which is one of the most um, useful movements I think we have in yoga. We're going to do it very, very slow. So imagine here your entire vertebra, one vertebra at a time, your spinal cord. And we're sinking into the middle back. So that means the belly drops down to the floor. We're lifting through the tailbone and through the heart space. So the upper back starts to lift and elongate. And then from here, maybe take the chin up and look forward. So we find our cow pose. Shoulders roll back. There's this flexion happening. There's a sense of lift through the front body. Maybe you feel tension in your lower back here. Just take one more breath. And then exhale. Let's reverse that. So now, as you imagine your spinal cord now moving in the opposite direction, the area that sunk becomes lifted. The tailbone now tucks under, the chest kind of just collapses in on itself a bit, as the shoulders push away and the chin moves towards the chest. So the middle back now is lifting and that place where we were sinking before is pushing up and back. So you're creating this nice rounded Fine, press into the floor with your hands and with your shins, knees, and tops of your feet. And slowly with the inhale, we start to flatten out. And we're just going to move from one to the other now a little bit quicker. So as we inhale, we move into cow. And as we exhale, we curl into cat. Try to be really slow and meticulous with your movement. Almost like you're moving through something sticky and thick like molasses. Let's do two more just like that. With intention, with integrity, you can even close your eyes. You don't need to see anything or look anywhere. See if you can start to observe the inner landscape of the body, what's happening inside. Not so concerned about the outside. Curling up is the one. One vertebra at a time, finding your space. One last one, inhale. At the end of that exhale, we'll take a regular balasana, so big toes touch, hips sink to the heels, maybe widen your knees, reach your chest and body forward as the chin or the forehead comes to the floor. Take a moment to relax into the shoulders, create that space in the spine and hips. Steady your breathing. One more deep breath in at your own pace. Check in with the body. Make sure you're not holding unnecessary tension anywhere. Exhale fully. From here, we'll lift the head, 
take your weight forward back to your tabletop and we're going to make your way to Shavasana. So cross your feet at the ankles, you can bring your knees together. Inhale, pick yourself up and slide your feet forward so you can extend your legs through and come to seated. Back to that same upright seated Dandasana position. Then I'm going to pivot around, you don't have to, you can lay right from there and take your body all the way down. Let's start our Shavasana with the feet planted on the floor. The hands can be one at the belly, one at the heart. Feet are separated, knees are together. We call this one constructive resting pose because there's, it's taking tension away from the hips. They're kind of tucked under and relieved. Your whole back is flat on the floor. And sometimes with the legs straight, it can cause some tension in the lower back. So this is a good alternative for Shavasana. One more breath. With the next exhale, we will open the knees, slide the feet forward and out. Relax the toes out to the sides. Let the legs completely relax. Let there be no tension in the hips, the legs, the thighs. And then let your arms out. Palms facing up towards the ceilings and your hands can be close to your body or anywhere in between, farther away, wherever they're comfortable for you. Close your eyes. Take rest. This is a really nice practice to do maybe at the end of the day. You can always check back in with the recording and you can put it into your nighttime routine before bed. And you can do your final shavasana in bed until you fall asleep. It's a very calming, restorative way to end your day. Stay here, take your rest. Take your rest. Take rest.